Okay, welcome to iLecture Online and our next example on heat transfer through radiation. Now we're going to talk about the Earth's equilibrium temperature. Now, of course, we have to oversimplify the model because the Earth does have an atmosphere and the atmosphere does tend to retain heat. But if we ignore that aspect of it, what would the temperature of the world be, of the Earth be, if we simply look at it from a simple perspective of radiation? The Earth's shining onto the Earth the Earth receiving the energy from the Sun and then the energy being re-radiated out in all directions at all times into the universe. What would the temperature of the Earth be if that was the case? Again, we can say that the dQ dt is equal to the emissivity and for the Earth that's probably about 0.9 sigma times the surface area times temperature to the fourth power. And now let's see, we can then go ahead and calculate how much energy the Earth receives from the Sun. Now, of course, you can see that the portions of the Earth that are pointing directly to the Sun, they receive a whole lot more energy than portions that are here on the side where they just come and get a little bit of the energy of the Sun. But we can kind of average it out. We can assume that if we were to cut the Earth open like this and we had all the energy received on that flat surface of the cross-section of the Earth, that would be the same amount as would be distributed over a semi-sphere. So what we can say then is that the total energy energy received from the Sun is equal to the energy per uh, unit area times the area of the Sun. Alright, so maybe we'll just write it like this. Energy per unit area times the total area where the light shines if we were to cut the Earth in half and we have this flat surface. Alright, the energy that we receive per unit area, that's about 1361 watts per square meter. I know that in a previous example the number that we got was slightly different from that but that's because there's some other factors we have to consider. At this rate this is about the energy that we measure out in space just above the Earth's atmosphere. That's the amount of energy that we receive from the Sun per square meter. And if we then multiply that times the cross-section of the Earth, that so would be pi r squared, then we can get the total energy received on the Earth. And so this is equal to um, let's see here, uh, 1361 watts per square meter times pi and times the radius of the Earth which is 6,378 kilometers or 6,378 million meters, oh, don't forget the meters, that would be then meters and we have to square that. So that's the radius of the Earth in meters. So let's see what we get. That would be 1361 times pi times 6378000 squared equals and so the total amount of energy received from the Sun per second is 1.74 times 10 to the 17th watts. That's joules per second. Alright, now if we want to find the equilibrium temperature we can go ahead and take that number and plug it back into the dQdt. So this goes back in here that's the dQ dt, and then we can solve for the temperature the Earth would be. All right, but now the area, of course, is no longer going to be the cross-sectional area of the Earth. This is not going to be the total surface area of the Earth because the Earth re-radiates in all directions, not away from the Sun, to the side, towards the Sun, all directions. All right, so rewriting this equation, we can say that temperature is equal to the fourth root of the dQ dt, that's the amount of energy received by the Earth, divided by E sigma A, and so that is equal to the fourth root of this number right here, 1.74 times 10 to the 17th, 17th watts, divided by 0 0.9, sigma is 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8 watts per meter squared Kelvin to the fourth power. And then, of course, now we need to have the surface area of the Earth. So what's the surface area of a sphere? It is 4 pi times the radius squared. So it would be 6378000 meters squared. There. And that will give us the equilibrium temperature of the Earth, of course, pushing aside all other factors such as atmospheres and clouds and convection, heat transfer and all that. So there's, it's a lot more complicated than that, but from a simple perspective, what would this be? So take that number, divide by 0.9, divide by 5.67 e to the 8 minus, 
divide by 4, divide by pi, and divide by 6378000 squared equals, and then take the fourth root of that, and it's 286. That would be 286 Kelvin. Now, how much is that in centigrade degrees and how much is that in Fahrenheit degrees? Now, of course, if you subtract 273 from that, we'll get 13 degrees centigrade, 13 centigrade degrees. And then if we convert that to Fahrenheit degrees, okay, so then uh, what we have to do is we have to divide that by 9. Uh, no, divide by 5 times 9 and then add 32 to that, plus 32, and that gives us 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Which, by the way, is the average temperature of the world. But, again, there's all kinds of factors we have to take into play. Turns out that we don't receive this kind of energy from the Earth. Actually, we receive about half of that. So where was I? So this is the energy that, that is received by the cloud tops and by the upper portion of the atmosphere. Much of it is reflected in, back into space without being absorbed uh, by the top of the clouds, by the ice, by the oceans, and so forth. Some of it is being uh, uh, reflected or not allowed through because of the atmosphere, and only a portion of that gets through. So the real numbers would be very different. But this is kind of interesting when you think about it. If we take all the energy received from the sun to be 1,361 watts per square meter, we spread that over the Earth, and then we understand how much the temperature of the world, uh, how much the Earth would then radiate back into space, it turns out the approximate number we get is very, very close to the average temperature of the world. So you can see that there's kind of a, an equilibrium status that the Earth will take on based upon how much energy it receives and how much energy it radiates back into space.